There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am here for another Zoom bookish chat with a very special guest, Nicola, formerly of Booktube fame. Her channel is, <laughs> was, Robotnik. Welcome, Nicola. Thank you, Sean. It's nice to be here. How are you doing? Good, thank you. I got You're... lots of rain here because it's Friday or Saturday night here, but sorry, it's daytime for you. <laughs> daytime, yeah. I'm not yet a day drinker. If you just give me another year or two... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I would have progressed. Uh huh. Lockdown life will push you towards that. <laughs> so you're in California. That's right. I'm not hearing a, a Californian accent. No, I'm from Scotland. Yeah. Although a lot of people do say that I sound completely American now. Really? Yeah. Actually, I have um, a yoga instructor of mine ask me if I was Canadian one day. <laughs> I was like, no. What a compliment! <laughs> but then when I told her where I was from, she was like, oh, I met people from Glasgow when I lived in Malaysia. They didn't sound anything like you. You just sound totally American. You don't sound foreign at all. I was like, okay, I guess I've already forgotten how this conversation began. <laughs> I, am, I am hearing uh, more Scottish than American accent. Yeah. That's, uh, That's good. Accents do change. Do I have a Japanese <laughs> accent? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I've noticed. <laughs> I had fun putting all the pieces of you together on the internet mm. because you- Because I've been stalking you from various angles. <laughs> stalking, but you've been leaving comments. And when I would click on the link, I would go to these fabulous videos from 2017. Is that when you left? Yeah, 2017. Like and and I think I might have left a comment the first time I did that saying, oh, thanks for your comment. I hope you come back. Mm -hmm. And then I- but the next comment you left, um, I didn't remember that part of it. And then you were following me on Goodreads and uh, didn't put it all together. And somebody was talking about you on a video. I don't remember if it was Rita or who it was. And finally, it all came together. <laughs> and like, oh, my God. Yeah, I've just been on the ether this whole time. <laughs> so how long were you on BookTube? I think about, would it have been five years? I started in 2013 through yeah the end of 2017 and I didn't really like I just kind of stopped making videos it didn't really happen intentionally and all of a sudden it's been like two and a half years and I keep thinking maybe I'll make a video one of these days and I haven't really got around to it <laughs> well no pressure for me but uh, <laughs> if this happened to be some kind of a uh, momentum building uh <laughs> step towards coming back I would be delighted well I hope so <laughs> hopefully people aren't like uh, clamoring for me to come back and then I'm like oh Jesus check all over my feed <laughs> I actually was exploring more of your videos and I saw a reference to the fact that you used to maybe still do but had a bookish podcast yeah I did um, I don't anymore my friend who I did it with lives in England and I think we did that for about two years and then she she had kids so she we decided to go on hiatus but then you know in the meantime I moved here and then it became very difficult for us to find times to actually chat so the last couple of months that we did it I was here and she was there and it just kind of got difficult but it was really fun while we were doing it what was the name of your podcast it's called bookish blether blether which is which is a scottish word for like blather. chat yeah, yeah. Like blather, blather I know blether sounds mm -hmm. like maybe you know related to that so how long did you do that? I think it was about two years. And yeah. are the archives somewhere that people can still go and listen? No, we stopped paying for the hosting for it. So I think you can probably listen to like the first two or three episodes. And um, I do still have them on my computer. And it's one of those things I was meant to like put them on YouTube or something. But ah, well. I've never gone around to doing that. Maybe I can do that. Maybe something says during lockdown. <laughs> I'm not are going you, anywhere. <laughs> are you a consumer of bookish podcasts now? Yeah, I listen to a few. There's one called Literary Friction which yeah. is, yeah, a uh, kind of London-based one. They do interviews. And they're quite cerebral, I find. Um, they do a lot of recommendations and things. I like the themes that they do. Um, and I like Literary Disco. Mm -hmm. I listen to that one. I don't listen to bookish podcasts the way that I used to, so I'm mm -hmm. aware of these, but uh, don't have really an opinion one way or the other on them, but mm -hmm. they're certainly famous. Yeah, they're doing a middle march read along right now, which is quite fun. I read it last year, so I can kind of listen and try to remember things <laughs> rather than reading along with them. I came back to reading Hardcore about four or five years ago, and it was bookish podcast that brought me back, specifically mm -hmm. Book Riot, and they're all the books 
it got me onto Scribd, and I was a member on of Scribd for about a year before I started reading anything. If they had, I just <laughs> very tippy toe back, and mm -hmm. and then I discovered the readers, Simon Savage and Thomas. Oh yeah, that. that was a good one. And I just gobbled that up. I just went back to their archives. That's why I was asking you about your archives. I right, yeah. Fell in love with that podcast. That's and because of Simon Savage, I eventually came to BookTube myself. So. Oh, nice. I didn't realize that was your written. That was my routine. Yes. Nice. Yeah, so, I enjoyed the readers too. Yeah, that was fantastic. What kind of reader are you? I've been reading a lot of translated work in the last few years, and I really like Mexican and South American literature in particular and translation. It's a lot of literary fiction, and um, I like to read essays and kind of memoir as well. Why don't we get started with, have you read the, the one that's everybody's talking about from Mexico, newly translated, uh, Fernanda Melchor? Is that yes, Hurricane Season. Hurricane season, have you read it? Yeah, that one's intense. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. My copy's still coming in the mail to me, but uh, it mm -hmm. sounds intense. And I watched an online Zoom type thing with her uh, about a month ago, and she mm -hmm. totally won me over because I wasn't sure if I wanted to read it. It sounded very violent. It is very violent, right? Yeah, it's really violent. It's not like, I wouldn't say it's gratuitous, but it is sensational. Okay. What she talked about in that, I listened to the same event did you, you did. Yeah, she's so eloquent, and it's crazy when someone's like trying to find their words in a second language, but they still speak so fluently. Yeah. It does get quite overwhelming because each chapter gets longer, and so I, I was just kind of like reading one chapter at a time, and there's like no paragraph breaks, and so you just really have to just like zone into it, and it just keeps propelling you along. And so by the time I got to the end, I was like, <laughs> so many horrible things are happening. <laughs> but it's amazing. If it's not gratuitous, uh, and if I feel like there's a point to me being at least somewhat traumatized by what I'm reading, I, I'm okay with that. But yeah. if it's gratuitous, I, I don't, I can't stand it. So, yeah, um, I'm not a big fan of no paragraph breaks. I must say. Yeah, it's kind of kind of difficult. I did find like the first couple of days I read it that my eyes hurt, but then I think after that it was just like I was reading such horrible things. <laughs> I was like, I wasn't thinking about my eyes anymore. It's a very mild pet peeve, but I don't, I, I prefer some paragraph breaks, please. Mm -hmm. Well, there is also the other end of that where everything these days seems to be more and more fragmented. You know, you're Jenny Offals of the world. <laughs> started. <laughs> but, no fun. I didn't really care for the first one. And I, what I heard of the second, the, I don't know if it's the first one, but what was it called? Department I, of Speculation. That one. It was okay, but a little too fragmentary. Mm -hmm. little too felt like kind of a rough draft of something. Right. But lots of people loved it. And what I've heard of the second one uh, didn't. Even more so. Seem <laughs> I mean, she basically just did the same style again. Um, I liked Department of Speculation, but I found that weather, because she was trying to speak about something that was global, it was almost too specific. It was like you almost kind of had to be a librarian from New York to really feel it, I felt like. Oh, oh interesting. At least for me. I just kind of felt like the form didn't fit the same way that it did for the first one. I wasn't moved to give it a try. But speaking of pet peeves, uh, paragraph breaks, it doesn't, I don't hate it, but I don't love mm -hmm. it. But a lot of people have other pet peeves that I don't share. For example, I don't care about quotation marks around dialogue. In fact, I kind of am now to the point where I find quotation marks in fiction kind of juvenile. Hmm. That's an interesting take. Yeah, it doesn't bother me as long as I can follow it. I've never had any trouble following it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but maybe I'm just really intelligent in that one small way. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably not. That's probably not the explanation. But yeah, that, so that doesn't bug me. Do you have any pet peeves? Um, I'm trying to think of reading ones that I have. I think I'm mostly just annoyed if it's like a really tiny font or like, yep. you, you've mentioned this before, I think the facsimile font, I find stuff like that difficult to read. Do you mean I like italicized? Have, like when it's like, like the photocopy? Uh, yes, 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 yes. No, I can't stand that. Mm -hmm. and, and my other thing about that, the related like that is italicized font. I can't stand that. Right, yeah. Yeah, if there's like a whole paragraph in italicized, like I start like, yeah, my brain turns off or something. Yeah. I share that one. Actually, my husband and I were just talking about one of my pet peeves, which is in other readers, which is, people may get offended by this if they're listening, but um, like people who, who will put down a book because they don't like a character or the way they speak about their characters is like, they're like, this would, person wouldn't be my friend, so I'm not interested in what they have to say, like that kind of thing. I've, I've just never understood. For me, I, 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 uh, I like to have somebody that I can root for. Mm -hmm. in the story so if, if yeah. everybody is hateful i really don't enjoy it right 
So I don't, I don't mind if I don't like a character as long as, I, th I, th I think it's something like rooting for them, as long as they're interesting or I care that they survive. <laughs> Listening to you, maybe it's that I've never been able to express it correctly because if a character's interesting, I like them. They mm -hmm. may not be likable, but yeah. I like them if they're interesting. So mm -hmm. this, that's the nuance that I would add to the discussion because you know, a lot of the examples that people typically use of characters that they dislike and so they didn't like the book are, I, I love those characters. They weren't very nice, but that's mm -hmm. beside the point. But the author yeah. made, made me care. So Yeah, I think that's something that I like in books as well is like when something's like kind of terrible or like, you know, like a person like behaves poorly or they're just like horrible to be around, but they're kind of, they're interesting or you can like revel in it in some way with them. I, I like that. And I think that I'm the biggest sucker for uh, works of fiction where I start out not liking the character and then the character shows something else by the end that's mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> nothing cements me to a book more than, than that kind of arc. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking of Ernest Jean's African American novel, which he just died last year, and his novel, A Lesson Before Dying where the African-American teacher, who was so rude and arrogant and unlikable, gets pressured to give lessons to a, I think a 12-year-old African-American kid on death row for a crime he didn't commit, to mm -hmm. give him lessons before he's executed, to give him some sort of sense of self-respect, of which he had none, and to see how that dickhead teacher grew and changed through that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's those are my favorite books what are you reading now at the moment um, i'm reading two books right now i just started one called family by j california cooper which dd told us all to read like many years ago oh. <laughs> and i did not do it <laughs> but it lingered on my wish list and so you know after the protests and everything over the past few weeks i was like i really do need to take a look at what i read and why i read it um, and so I was kind of going through my shelves and what's available to me that's by, that are by black authors or voices that I haven't been seeking out actively. And this one I, I remembered. And so I looked up at my library and they had it. So started that one today. Oh, just today. Okay. Yeah. And then I've also just started one by Batsy Sidwa, which is called Cracking India. And um, that's my other book club read for this month. Oh, um, I heard a little bit about that. It's, is it fairly new? I think it's from a, a handful of years ago, maybe 2010 okay. or so. Yeah. I just heard about um, it. I, in the UK, it was called the Ace Candy Man. Oh. Yeah, I'm only our, a few chapters into that one as well. Yeah, no, I heard about it. Somebody on Twitter was yeah. talking about it. It's, uh, it's very recently gone on to my TBR. So I will be looking forward to your monthly wrap up. I mean, you talked about how much yeah. you liked it or didn't. <laughs> recent reads that you would like to rave about? Um, I feel like I've, I've finished like eight or nine books in the last week or so, but I know that I've told you about some of them. Oh, I read The Over Story. Okay. Um, I read that with um, Leo from A Little Book Life. Um, he put on a group read on Voxer. Oh, so did you I take part like, in that? This is on my shelf. Yeah, so that was on oh, my great. shelf and I thought I should, I should get to it. And the first week, it was like Juan and I against the world because <laughs> there were people from like almost every country in the script chat Juan's and review, Juan yeah. and I were the only ones who were like, mm. <laughs> actually, I think we both did like the first part a yep. bit more than the rest of it, but some more people kind of joined us later and like having a bit more disparaging things to say. I didn't pull it. Um, I know that it's... you bailed on that one. Yeah, it's over there. I, I really quite liked the first, I can't remember how many pages it was, but when the, when the characters all started coming together, I got nauseated and they bailed. It mm. just got yeah, so, don't blame you. so Im, Im, uh, preposterous and kind of new agey. Mm -hmm. And obviously, well, my snobbish opinion was, obviously, if you don't care about well-crafted literary fiction, but you care about trees, you could still maybe care about the novel, but I completely ceased caring at that. Whereas the first, you know, those, yeah. those short stories that introduced the characters, and most of those I thought were really quite powerful, so. Yeah, some of them were pretty nice. I actually did switch to audiobook, and I think I would not have got through it without doing that. Well, you did finish it. Yeah, I did finish it. I would not have done it by myself. <laughs> I mean, it was interesting to kind of get people's perspectives on it, and I'm not a very thematic reader. I think I'm more interested in, in language and 
kind of the art of the novel, I suppose. People who are kind of more thematic readers. I think, I feel like we were just talking about the author a lot though. Like, I think the author was trying to do this and I think the author is trying to say that and he's trying to make us think about this and care about that. And to me, that's very didactic. And I feel like the author shouldn't be like on your shoulder at all times being like, here's what to think. Did you see yeah, what like, I did there? Write some essays. Mm -hmm. Don't be lecturing me in your fiction. Yeah. Stick around. Are you a bailer? Kind of. I feel like I haven't been lately. I feel like I've pushed through more novels than I should. I don't know why. For example? I think I, like if, if I get to halfway, I feel like I should just finish it. It's about the halfway mark where I feel, okay, I've given it an honest shot. I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. So can you give us some examples? Uh, I'm, trying um, to get, I'm trying to get the dirt, Nicola. My... What are some books you wish you hadn't bothered finishing? <laughs> let me open my uh, reading spreadsheet because I've read quite a few books this year already. See, there was one that I, I DNF'd it, but then I still finished it, <laughs> which was Otessa Moshveg's short story collection, Homesick for Another World. Mm. And like some of the stories were quite good. Mm -hmm. The thing was that most of the stories, I finished them and I went, okay then. <laughs> like I think she has a tendency to kind of be disgusting for the sake of being disgusting. And I like some of the kind of visceral stuff about her writing, but it doesn't always go anywhere. Have you read any of her novels? I have, I've read, I think I've read all of them except for the okay. new one. Okay. Did you find them to be more successful? I've only read her yeah. debut, which was called mm -hmm. McBean. What is it? Um, oh, McGlue. 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 I actually I love, haven't read that one. I love that one, but I, apparently mm -hmm. it's very different. I heard her interview with the Californian, what's his book? book uh, he has a radio show, KCR, KCR oh, um, Book Time, book, one of the most famous bookish radio programs in the world, and I've just blanked on his name. But anyway, I listened to his two-part interview. I'll put a link in the show notes. I've talked about okay. it before with her, and she is an intense person to listen to. And mm -hmm. what I got from that was, if I'm going to get into Otesha Moshveg, I have to start with Nick Blue. So I finally did. I read it last year, quite loved it, and haven't read anything else. But I have Eileen mm -hmm. sitting on the shelf here. So. Cool, yeah. I kind of went backwards. I picked up my year of rest and relaxation from the library. Um, and I, I really enjoyed that. I, I, can't, I started kind of slowly, but then I just, I finished it in an afternoon. Um, and I thought that one was great. Okay. Um, yeah, there is something about the kind of the visceral nature of her books. Like I like that other people don't go there. But then when I went back and read Eileen, I think I found it quite slow at first. And then my friend said that he thought of it as more of a character study. And I was like, okay, well, if I read it as a character study, maybe I'll enjoy it more. And I did. But then that one does have like a kind of like a violent scene in it, almost out of nowhere. And I didn't think that necessarily worked. Okay. But it did remind me a bit of um, Olga Tokarczuk's book, okay. Drive Your Play Over the Bones of the Dead. It had a similar atmosphere to that. So I'm, I'm looking forward to her next one, I think. I think she's improving, so... Great. Well, I thought McGlue was really, I uh, would be really mm -hmm. interested to hear what you thought of McGlue. Yeah, I actually did download that one, and but I tried to read it as a break from reading Moby Dick, and then I was like, this is seafaring too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's not really a break from Moby Dick. <laughs> so yeah, I should go back to that one. So, uh, uh, Otesha Mosbeg, do you have any others on your I wish the hell I had bailed list? We'll move on to the positive here in a minute, but... Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, um, whether I can... Well, it's not that I wish I bailed on it, but I was glad when it was over. And then the other one I read around that time was the new Emer McBride book, Strange with Hell. Oh, well, I remember one of her books was on your top reads of a certain year a few years ago. Maybe. That was her second book, The Lesser Bohemians, which is like joyous. It's just very, I don't know. It's like being a teenager. Like you just feel everything all the time. And then this book was her attempt at going a bit more like middle-aged. And so it's about this woman who's like in hotels and just kind of sitting around and thinking about her life and, it was very cerebral, but like mm -hmm. nothing really happens and there's not a lot to piece together in it. And it just felt to me like she had to write it, like, but it was more like a project than a novel in the end. Didn't work. Yeah, unfortunately. It was, it was very flat, especially coming off of the Lesser Bohemians. It gave me a lesson about having too high expectations. <laughs> uh, what do they call it? Second book syndrome? I don't know if it's your second book. Um, it's her third book, but... She had an involvement with like the Beckett Library and she said that she was trying to get away from Beckett but then ended up writing a book that was extremely Beckett. <laughs> Can we talk about a little bit about Scottish literature? Mm -hmm. No, you have some on your TBR. I do. I have been wanting to read this classic book from 1920, I think, Lewis Grassic Gibbon, Sunset Song. 
which is heavily dialectical, not dialectical, uh, Scottish dialect, lots of Scottish mm -hmm. dialect. I heard a guy talk on a podcast about it and he did it as an audio text combo, which is how I want to do it. You haven't read it? I haven't, no. It was on the curriculum, but I, n I never came in contact with it. Have I feel like it's one of those books that people that I went to school with hate because they had to read it at school. Yeah. So I'm kind of glad that I didn't. And maybe I'll enjoy it when I do get to it myself. Well, I might be hitting you up for a buddy read or at least to explain some of the vocabulary to me later. Yeah, definitely. My husband <laughs> read Train Spotting years ago, which is written completely in dialect. And he kept having to nudge me and be like, what does Bairn mean? <laughs> was this I know word? what Bairn means. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, I recently read Jesse Kesson's debut okay. novel. Uh, I've forgotten the title, but have you read her? I haven't, no. She's, she's good. That book was good. But uh, going from the oldest to the newest, this is the debut, Shuggy Bane. Yeah. Was, I've been seeing that one around. It just came out, I think. Mm -hmm. Like a month I saw, ago? I think I read about, about the author in Lit Hub, maybe. And he seems to be very unknown. Yeah, debut, and it's a, a gay a novel from Scotland. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it was gay when I bought it, so I lucked out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It seems like it would have a, a like a strong vision of Glasgow in the sixties. Yeah. So I'm waiting for someone to read it to give me their opinion. <laughs> someone just well, I have a buddy read scheduled, I believe, for August. So okay. And the only, I think, the only Scottish novel I've read and I absolutely loved it is uh, Elspeth Cameron's *O Caledonia*. Yeah, my book club um, back home read that one a few months ago. Did you like it? I didn't read it with them, but yeah, it, it sounded like they had a good discussion about it. Yeah, it's really strange and wonderful. The character had a horrible life and she wasn't very likable, but I loved her. So there's a good example. Mm -hmm. And just kind of a, has a haunting atmosphere. I guess some people might call it, what would you call it? Almost gothic. I just don't think like that. Maybe mm -hmm. in order for me to enjoy a gothic novel, just don't tell me it's gothic and then I'll decide yeah. I like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, stories. in that case, there's one that you might like. It's by John Burnside called The Dumb House. Um, called the what? The Dumb House. The Dumb House. Yeah. Uh, so it's about a man who wants to find out whether language is it's kind of a nature or nurture. He doesn't know if it's inherent in humans or if it's developed. And so he does these horrible experiments on babies, basically. But it's kind of off the page. And it's just like very dark. There's a, there's a novel, we're talking about unlikable characters before there's a novel with a character that you definitely could not root for, but it's extremely interesting. And is he a Scottish writer? Mm -hmm. John Burnside, okay, never heard of him. Yeah. Hey boys and girls, well this was such a scintillating and extended conversation that I'm going to split it up into two parts. Stay tuned for part two coming in about a week.